good day ladies and gentlemen i'm gonna tie do an updated uh video uh instructional video on how to tie the classic dirty hairy fly in, in some ways it's become simpler than uh how i originally tied it years ago um just some little little tweaks and materials as well uh so here we go uh, I start with the Gamakatsu SC15 one ot hook, or you can tie these in any size, really. This is, this is my go-to for almost any fish, saltwater fish down in the Outer Banks. Largemouth bass, um, you can tie them in any size you want, right down to panfish size or, or larger if you want. Um, the eyes are hairline or really any company you want the double pupil lead eyes. And um, they look like this. And the body material is Estaz Grand, which is the larger, bushier version. And something I've changed from the original as new materials come on the market. This, this is uh, root beer, which is one of the, the two standard colors <clears throat> that I do this in are root beer and chartreuse. There's a new product called Opal. It'll say Opal before the color on the page. And it actually has even the black actually has a little bit of more has a little more flash in it um really outstanding difference from the just the plain estes i really like this and to add a little flash we have whatever brand you use this is rainbow flash um doesn't really matter what brand you use so here we go um, I'm going to do the, the root beer and orange version, which is very good down here for stained water, uh, muddy water, early in the morning, later at night, uh, cloudy days. Um, it's a, it's a, it actually works well on sunny days as well, but I, I seem to go with chartreuse on sunny days and then uh, the root beer for cloudier days. Uh, you know, you'll have to excuse my, excuse my wacky ass glasses here. They're always good for a laugh. Okay, here we go. Um, I use the 280 denier thread just because I'm tying almost always tying saltwater flies and certain parts of this fly i either want it to build up quickly um, or i want to crank down on material to make it super strong so i'm just wrapping the shank right now once i get just past the curve i'm going to build up a a bump right there and this will this will act as a uh, a prop for the tail, an additional prop for the tail. So you can see I did a little. Hope you can see that right here. And then I'm going to come up to the about a third of the way back from the front of the hook, and I'm going to do another bump there come a little further up leave just enough space for my eyes to rest in there and do a second bump um, now i'm going to cut this tag off i'm going to rest my eyes in in between those two bumps on an angle away from me and i'm going to make five or six wraps in that direction. Then I'm gonna turn it, crank it back straight. I know you can't really see this. 
um, tie that in. At this point, I'm going to just straighten everything out here. And then I'm going to do some of these under wraps just to kind of lock it in there. Make sure it's straight. I'll do a few more. Some helicopter uh, figure eight wraps here. And then I'll bring the thread back just behind the eyes there. Um, again, always make sure this is your hooks in there super tight so you can flick the end of it and it will not move. Um, another thing, if you're not a real experienced tire, um, you would want to keep this distance between the front of your bobbin and the hook very short. If you get it out like this, it's it's extremely clumsy, difficult to manage. So at all times and during your tie, go ahead and shorten this up. It gives you a lot more control on your, your tying. At this point, I'm going to take a little bit of the, I use the Loctite super glue. And I'm just gonna put a little glob here right on top of the eyes. And you'll notice it'll start, gravity will take it down towards the bottom of the eyes. And then I just, I flick this a couple times. That vibration takes the super glue all the way down through the threads to the bottom, uh, really permeating it very well. Now I'm gonna come back up. Now that I have that glue uh, laying on the eyes and under the eyes. I'm going to do about three wraps each direction. Tighten it up with the, the helicopter wrap here. And now your eyes are locked in super tight. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is put the tail on. Um, we have this, it's very important, this is hairline. Uh, I really wouldn't use any other. I've tried some other uh, companies and really didn't work out too great. So I, I would go very specific with this. This is the, the size is standard. That's very important. The, the uh, designation is ultra chenille. So um, I get most of my materials from Feathercraft, um, Bear's Den, or a couple online. Um, I highly recommend OBX on the Fly. Uh, it's our local fly shop here in the Outer Banks. Um, we have a saying here, Dave can get it, because whatever you need, just give him a call, send him an email, whatever, and uh, Dave can get it. Okay, so as far as the tail material goes, uh, let's see here. We're going to get this out of the package here. The length of the tail is normally the way I designate it. Is I will take a wrap and a half off of here and cut it, okay, a wrap and a half, a width and a half from the standard packaging. Um, now that might be a little long, you can always trim it at the end. And uh, at this point, we're just gonna get a lighter real quick. And we're gonna put a little point on that tail and it kind of seals up the end for you, keep it nice and durable. Now we're gonna lay the this ultra chenille right up behind the eyes on top of the hook shank and again if you're if you're newer or new to tying your first couple wraps should be loose so you can adjust uh, anything you know your materials on the fly and uh, no pun intended 
and then start wrapping back towards the curve of the hook, keeping that chenille on top of the hook. And then you're gonna stop right before you get to that bump. Okay. And you can see it's already, that bump's already working. The tail's already propped up a little bit. Um, now I'm gonna take my, um, my Estes. Okay, this is root beer. And I'm gonna take the end, the very end of it, and I'm gonna peel off just about, not even an eighth of an inch, just exposing the, the cord or the core of the Estes. I'm gonna lay that threaded core up against the hook, but on the side of the hook facing me. And it's really important that you keep it on the inside facing you, uh, and you'll see why in a second. You don't want it tied in on the top or the far side. You want it on the inside. Again, start off lightly, tighten that up. Bring it up to the front. You can even go outside in front of the eyes. And now's when we're, we're really gonna uh, do something that is a new addition. We're just gonna add a little bit of flash. Um, again, it's the rainbow flash. And I've cut it in half and then in half again, which gives me these roughly about three inch strips. And I'll take four or five of these. I'll fold them in half around the thread like that. And just like the chenille i'm going to rest it on top of the hook start loose and then i'm going to start wrapping back towards the curve of the hook and stopping again i'm going to stop right before that that bump and then bring the thread up to the front okay here's where we really support that tail and keep it from foul wrapping on your hook and allowing it to get all the action that it can. We're gonna grab the, the flash and the tail, lift it straight up in the air, go back under the tail away from you. See how that's really popped up right now. And Go back over the top of the hook, and that's this is what really locks it in, that first wrap. So this is where you can make any little adjustment you need to to make sure it's popping up in the air like that. Now we're just going to wrap this Estes as we preen it back a little on each wrap. Towards the front of the hook. Uh, you can use a rotary vise, which I do when I'm when I'm tying these for orders. But just to show you, um, get right up behind the eyes, pull that tight, get your thread behind the eyes, and then come up under and behind the estes and lock that material in a couple times back just behind the eyes and then up to the front and then we're gonna just trim this estes right up to the bottom of the fly okay now we're just going to build up the the head here right in front of the eyes a little bit very simple tie it really is um, and I'm just gonna
finish this whip finish this off okay we're going to trim that close as we can put your head cement on i just happen to be using this uh uv cement moon which you can also get at obx on the fly and you don't want to put you don't have to put a ton of this uh, uv cement on here if, if you put it on too thick you're going to find that it it'll chip off and when it comes off it comes off in all uh, one big head section if you want to put extra on do it in thin coats and do several coats okay so now we're just gonna the final step here hold the fly upside down getting the flash and tail into your hand and then you're just gonna kind of twist and preen and force work this estes up under away from the back and up under the hook, almost like shrimpy type legs. And it also, to a point, makes it a little bit weedless. So it's a win-win there. Once you get that preened up, just turn the fly vertically like this. And you wanna trim the back flat. Just like that. Okay. And I don't know if you can see it. There you have it. It lays flat on the bottom. Uh, if you're fishing it uh, like a crab or if you're, there's three ways to fish this fly. Well, probably more, you know, you can, you can make up your own, but this fly is Unlike the Clouser or uh, some of the bait fish patterns, this, this fly can easily imitate a small crab, which Oregon Inlet is loaded with small crabs about this size. Um, Oregon Inlet is a crab sanctuary and redfish and trout love juvenile crabs. So if you're gonna, if you're up on the flats, uh, which is where uh, the grassy flats, which is where a lot of the crabs live, um, you'll wanna you'll wanna cast this out and sort of just small, very small strips crawl across the bottom. If the if the grass is thicker in certain areas, you might want to pull just short hard strips, just so that it works its way through the grass without getting caught up and obviously gets their attention, uh, move a little bit of water with the, the mass of this fly. Um, the way I fish this most is like a shrimp, um, either you make your cast, let it sink, almost fish it like a, a, a jig. You want, you want to give it a nice dropping motion and it will resemble a, a shrimp if you work it right. And oftentimes it, they'll hit on the drop. Um, now, if you're fishing current, you already have current moving, like there's certain parts of the Oregon Inlet where there's channels the tide starts moving, you get current. Man, you throw this fly out there and barely, barely move it. Um, just enough to tease them and and they'll, they'll whack the hell out of this fly. Um, and another reason that I fish it like that is oftentimes in those channels we're finding speckled trout. Speckled trout, are they're a bit of a hit and run artist. So they're, it's easy to miss them. So if you fish it with very small strips, that's 
putting very little um, slack in your line and you'll get a lot more hookups with the speckled trout by just casting it out and doing really slow, small strips, keeping that connection to your fly uh, tight. And of course, the other way to, to fish it is like a clouser or a, or a bait fish. You know, you see some, some bait fish action on top, uh, redfish are feeding, you just, throw it out, or trout, you throw it out there, strip as fast as you can, underhand, or uh, whatever, whatever your preference is. So it's, it's a pretty amazing fly. It imitates almost every type of uh, prey that we have down here in the Outer Banks, and quite frankly, probably anywhere you fish and it's done extremely well in freshwater as well. Uh, large mouth, smallies. And uh, here's, a, here's the chartreuse version. Okay, you just do the same thing. A little bit of green flash. Um, here's, the, here's the XL killer fly. Um, this will be my next video. And uh, that's about it. Um, I'll, I'll try to put a material list on there for you. Uh, I know it's a lot easier off a list. Uh, appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you next time. Happy New Year. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'll be doing some short videos on tips and tricks I use down here to catch more fish with the fly rod and um, also some pretty cool videos of guided trips uh, that I do wade fish uh, paddleboard kayak and um, if you are interested in a guided trip um, you can check me out at uh, flyfishingobx.com or call obx on the fly to uh to book a trip with me or several other uh guides to have some awesome guides there and uh hope to see you soon thank you